Well, hello and welcome to another Thursday sermon here in our Tribulation Soldier comms, guys. And as you can see, back in the garage, as always, goodness me, we've got a bit of a mess that's out here. But I've been working away on Emily's horse field and the horse lorry and all that sort of stuff. So I've just to sort of leave all the stuff behind and just get on with that just now. So yeah, getting there, guys. There's the, the big vlogging bike, 1200 Bandit. And we've got a new generator, like an older one, but a generator for the lorry and a power washer for the lorry and all sorts of different things, you know. And obviously fishing season's back, so we're getting a little bit done there as well, which is really good. But uh, that's that's not what this is for, guys. We'll get down to a sermon now. Yeah, it's so pretty windy outside, but we should be okay in here. You might feel the odd bang and rattle and all that, but we should be fine. And before I start, I always have to, guys, you know, as always, it's please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit notifications. We are YouTubers after all, you know, so that would be really great if you did that. Really help us and that would really support us, you know, that would just be great. And yeah, I've also got to apologise, guys, guys, see, just like that. Dave and Emily, this is kind of where we started with YouTube, was like our Barney family channel and the kids' channels and, and stuff like that, you know. And most YouTubers say guys, 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 all the time, you know. And of course, having done all these videos, um, you know, for us and with the kids, it's just guys, guys, guys. And I'm trying to phase this out when it comes to sermons and teachings. Because I've said before that, you know, the, it's preaching at a church is actually quite straightforward. You know, you can gauge the room, you feel the spirit, you see things happening and all that sort of stuff. But when you're doing this, you're just kind of staring at your camera lens, you know. But the great thing I've sort of find with that is that I feel like I'm just talking to one person and I, and I really, really love that, you know. So if you do hear the word guys and guys and guys, I'm phasing it, right? I'm phasing it. Yeah, so last time um, on the Thursday sermons, I spoke about how it's actually quite unacceptable. I, I feel very unacceptable for a Christian to feel like they're not accepted by God or loved by God. That's, that's quite difficult. That's a difficult pill to swallow for me. And that's because, obviously, I'm a pastor and I'm, and I'm an experienced Christian, but I wasn't always. You know, I wasn't always experienced. I wasn't always walking with God in the way that we are now. And that comes from that experience, that actual experience in God. And of course, for me, you know, it's all about knowing the scriptures and, uh, you know, all the ins and outs of that. When you know the scriptures, you tend to really begin to know the mind of God, you know. But as I always say again, you know, I am not special, you know, when it comes to me or you. If you're just a new Christian, I can guarantee you. Your salvation is no more or no less important than mine. It's just a level playing field with God. Me doing this doesn't make any difference to my salvation. It's got nothing to do with it. But when it comes to God, you know, when it comes to him being your father or your friend, for a lot of us, that's quite difficult to take. Because, you know, maybe one of you are watching just now or having, you know, you've had a good life, nothing really major's happened. But that's really not the same for everybody, mostly. Um, we are very, very coloured by the way we were brought up and the things that happened in our lives, you know. And um, it's not just victims of abuse and, and things like that, even though they are quite severe. There's a lot of other things as well, you know, the way we were brought up, the way we were treated, you know, the, the kind of environment that we were in. So sometimes, you know, when a person's coming to God or even just became a Christian and getting to know him, it can be quite difficult to take that, you know. Now, I'm going to get into how God gets into your past and gets that, so you're walking all over it, strutting and dancing on it, let me tell you, all those horrible things from the past and using it to help other people and, you know, it's just tremendous. But for now I'm just sort of laying the groundwork. And like I've said before in, in previous, I purposely put on about, it's about six teaching seasons of, of videos for you know, guys to go through. Um, and that's to give you that sure foundation, that's to give you that framework in your mind so you know what's what you understand and then god can fill that with the spirit that's how he, that's how he does it and we'll get into past stuff i've got a bad past my wife sharon she's got a bad probably worse actually than my own and i really want to share with you how jesus can just transform that but it is difficult it's difficult for a lot of people i find it very difficult to it probably took me five or six years to really get to know god as my father you know, this father heart stuff you know and uh, when you do, you know, he's very different from your perception of what a father should be. And even the best father in the world doesn't compare, you know. And, you know, there's that friendship, you know, where you get to know God, even where you become friends, you know, you, you, you just keep moving in that direction. It's always so great, you keep going. But for a lot of us, we've been betrayed by friends. You know, we've been betrayed and haven't had good mates. Some of us might have had no mates. 
So friendship's a thing that might be difficult to take from this God who created the heavens and the earth. This friend. So always the easiest place to start and probably the most important is something very, very unique when it comes to Jesus Christ. And that's him being your saviour. Let's put aside the father heart stuff. The stuff from our past, the friendships with God, all that different things. Let's look at Jesus Christ and you know, what this is all about and why it's so powerful, why it's so powerful in a person's life. Because I'm teaching this just now, but it's, it's, it's just a start. The experience will come from that. The seeds get sown and the plants get, that's the way that it works. And I can't make that happen, that's how God makes it happen. I, I, I can't make that happen in a person's life. But him being your saviour is something very, very different indeed. This Jesus, for all you know about Jesus just now, this Jesus came to walk on earth to fulfill every law of God and go across to pay for my sins and for yours. Showing and proving how much God loves people, how much he loves his creation, that he was willing to sacrifice his one and only son. And the great part that comes from that for us is that he took all of our punishment. Every punch, every slap, every broken, well sorry not broken bones, um, broken skin and blood and everything that happened, took it for us. Now I want to, again I always want to say please listen. Jesus Christ took care of my sins yesterday, today and tomorrow. I am a sinner saved by grace people. There's no such thing as a perfect Christian, it's absolute nonsense. Being sinless, absolute nonsense. I know there's lovely people you'd never think, you know, would sin or whatever, you know. But guys, I've seen my own heart, you know, that old heart. That it's not pretty. And I remember the things that I did and so on. And that builds over time as well, you know. I've been a pastor, well, I've been walking with the Lord properly again for 21 years. And probably now is the time that I'm really seeing how bad my flesh actually is. And it just makes you even more thankful that this Jesus went to a cross and took all our punishment. He gets the blame. I sin. Today, tomorrow, he gets blamed for it. That's the power of the cross from all that time ago. And that's what sets us free. And perhaps it's at a more sharp end of the gospel. That's a lot for a lot of people to take. You know, we'll get into that another time. But Jesus saved us, saves us from hell. You know, we put our faith in him. As a person, we are an eternal being. Our body might die, but our spirit and soul will live on. And contrary to the way, what the world would teach, there's only two places. There's heaven and there's hell. And that's it. That's all there is. And when you give your life to Jesus and you get that sensation that you are saved from hell, whatever happens now. If a grand piano dropped in this uh, shed and killed me just now, I'd be going straight to glory. Without any question. No shred of doubt in my mind whatsoever, nothing. And that comes from that experiences with God. So a saviour, someone who has saved our life, not this physical life, this spirit and soul life, the one that saved my life, he saved my life. When I gave my life to the Lord when I was nine, that's when I was saved. That's, that's what happened. I fell away in my teenage years, came back to God. He had to work out a lot of rubbish in my life, and I mean a lot. It was quite a high cost for walking away from it, it has to be said. And even now I've still got those kind of images in my head of things that I've done and, and, and so on, you know. But what God does is that, you know, some people, it has to be said that you give their lives to Jesus and, and they just, their past just goes like that. They're just totally delivered, looking to God, all that abuse, all that stuff just gets put to the side and, you know, it's brilliant. But for many, you know, it's, it's a process, it's something God takes us on a process. And what a lot of that process is designed to do is so we can get to know him more as he takes us through these things. But we can't stay in these things because we just become inward people and that's not nice. God wants us dancing on top of our past. That's what he really wants. So let me kind of put it the way, the way that I kind of see it in my mind, you know, that I've got this saviour, you know, he saved my life, which is great. But you've still got all these things from your past, any of the things that you might look at your abuse or the way you were brought up and all that sort of things what it's kind of like now when it comes to your memories it's like a it's like a bit of a museum you know and you've got this great new life for god where you're filling this museum up with new great memories guys
things, you know, just new things and experiences and all sorts of stuff. But there's this little wing that's off to the right, you know, or off to the left, I'll say, actually. And you go in there, you're free to come and go, but here's the bad past. And what you find with God is that it's frozen in time. You can walk through that museum and look behind these, all these different glass all the way around like that and see those bad memories and they're frozen. They're cold, they're dull, and you can just look at them and walk through them and leave any time you want because it does not control you. I look back into my past because obviously I've got to share just about everything that's ever really happened in my life because that's, that's my call, that's what I'm meant to do. So sometimes it is just taking a trip into that little bit of the museum. Sometimes I don't like it, you know, just you know, not, not too bad. But um, other times, you know, I just look at it and I think, you know, none of this stuff glorified God. I mean, use it now to help other people, you know. I can go in there for a little while and look at that particular memory, but guys, walk straight back out again. It's not control me. And God doesn't want to control you. God doesn't even want to control you. He wants you to be free and free from all of these things. And that's what the Saviour on the cross did. When you boil it all down, he went there and he took, and I always kind of tried to myself, he took all my sin. In a week's time, me and Sharon get snippy and fall out a little bit. We do at times, you know, it's just the way that it is. Paid. Paid, paid, paid. That doesn't mean I'm just going to tramp on and sin. That's, that's not how it works, you know. But it just means that I've got that safety. I've got that safety in Jesus. And if you're watching this just now, Jesus can save your life, and I mean really save your life and transform your life. I'll say it time and time again throughout sermons. You might be in your apartment in this area with this family, with these friends. It's just a nightmare, you know, just this pure nightmare. When we come to God, he'll take us out of that gradually. He'll take us out of that and things will change and will change. And after a year, I remember someone saying to me, your life will be very different in a year's time. You know, I was in that bottom of the barrel place. And it was, man alive. And today, I should have been a drug addict. I should be dead. You know, I should be absolutely dead. Three times divorced, screwed my life up, looking like a moron. But instead, here I am sitting doing this. Got a beautiful wife, beautiful kids. The Saviour, he saved me from all that. And he can save you. So if you do struggle with this Father heart of God, and you'll get to that. That's, that comes with experience. You get to know him. You get to know it's all part of it. That friendship and you experience things that God does for you. And you're like, I've never had a friend like this before. If you struggle with that, look at the Saviour. There's nothing to compare it to. I don't care what anyone thinks. There's nothing that compares. You might try and compare fatherhood to God, father heart, or friendship to Jesus, or whatever it is you do. But a Saviour is something very, very unique. You take that, you begin with that, and you can see it. You can see his great saviour. You know, he's willing to go through all that just for me. For a little scrag like me, you know, sitting up in the north of Scotland in our little town. Just for me, you know, just no problem at all. Everything, absolutely everything I've ever done was paid for so that I could be free. And that is basically what it is when you boil it all down. As I sin, Jesus gets blames for it still gets blamed for it. I sin, he gets hit. And it's just wonderful. He's willing to take that. He was willing to take that from me. And he's willing to take it from me now. He's willing to take it for you too. At the time of doing this sermon, I tried, I haven't actually done much in the way of, um, you know, prayers and teachings and all that sort of stuff. Because we're, you know, we're going through that whole COVID season and all that sort of stuff. And I would have just had these loads of, different things about you know COVID being a part of it I just didn't want that but we really are in the aftermath you know of quite a lot that's happened in the past two or three years you know it started with COVID obviously COVID is like something we've never most of us have never experienced on a worldwide scale at all the conflict in Ukraine and then of course the cost of living crisis that we are still in at the moment people have been through a lot a lot and you might sit there and think I need, I need to get out of this. I need to get, I need to get, a, I need a savior to get me out of this. A pastor can't get you out of this, people. 
they can help you only God can get you out of it only God can save you and make that difference and he will give you a life like you couldn't have imagined I've seen it in myself and the many others that truly follow Jesus Christ having their lives absolutely transformed by an amazing saviour yeah so there we go guys perfect saviour you know in time perfect father perfect friend it really is quite something it really really is but for now guys it's a bunk guys sorry you friend thank you so much for watching i hope you really enjoyed you know i'll be cheering so much more over the you know over the, the weeks months and years you know i just really hope it blesses you it changes things for you you know you just remember only god can do that you know only god can do that and i'll do my best you know to try and interpret the mind of god and so on from my experiences and my knowledge you know and i just really hope you get to feel that savior's presence